those medals. Well, down in the bottom right position, spawning as the blue Zerg player himself, it is Orc. And his opponent in the top left, he is the purple Protoss, A bomb. Now, Jorosa, yeah. I hate to break this to you, but um, the chat is saying that you're wrong. Oh. Apparently, if you've got no income and the other person does have an income, right. that is still indefinably higher. Uh. I feel like you should have a like a math geek off right now. Oh, I can see the point. Be well, but if that's the case, it would also be infinitely higher because you're dividing by zero. So does that mean either either way I'm right? If I can say either way. And it's it, still... it is dividing by zero infinite, undefined, or both, I guess would be the correct question to ask here, which would solve the issue. I don't know. Oh my know. goodness, people are actually like... I actually don't know. Googling this. I'm impressed though. Like, the, 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 the fact that we have a discussion about this in chat is all the reasons why I really like this community. <laughs> this is awesome. But I, I was under the impression that as long as you can still define it, even if you can define it as inf infinite, it's arguably not indefinable, but maybe someone's going to correct me there, I don't know. I'm an engineer, not a mathematician. I don't deal with zero. I deal with big, manly numbers. So I'm sure someone will get on the case. Big, manly numbers, sure. Sure you do, Jorasar. But anyway, of course, I think it's also worth noting that we've achieved something magical on Twitch. We've gone over a thousand viewers, and we're still having intelligent conversations. Does one over kappa equal kappa? Now that's more like a maths question I can answer. Yeah, that seems like, that's more like it, Bami. Well done. That's what we expect for a thousand plus Twitch channel. <laughs> I like how someone's like, yeah, it's like six. Six is a nice manly number. Six is, um, and the mathematicians in the chat will correct, uh, will confirm this. Six is the perfect number. It's actually defined as the perfect number. I'm not going to ask why. It's, um, I'm going it, it, to start talking about StarCraft now. I'm sorry, Jarosar. It's, it's the, what is it? It's factors multiplied. It is the, it's factors. I forget. It's like the sum of all its factors plus a whole bunch of other stuff. But six is known in mathematics as the perfect number. Anyway, Hatchery's coming down here <laughs> up the sporting pool. And this is up against a forge first out of a bomb. So he's going pretty pretty damn normal. Gonna be a little bit cautious about cannon rushes or things like that, but he yep. should be damn safe with these Zerglings and the third gonna get taken here by Orc at about the four minute twenty mark. Yep, things looking uh, looking pretty normal so far, I have to say. Uh, one thing I did want to highlight, that last game from A-Bomb. Um, whenever he sort of moved out with his aggression and stuff, he didn't feel he needed um, to do that with a Mothership Core, which I think was really interesting. Because imagine if Photon Overcharge was a factor uh, in those mutas coming over for the base race towards the end. Yeah, okay, he won it anyway. But if it was any closer, I'm pretty sure Photon Overcharge would have helped him an awful lot there. So, uh, yeah, I wonder true. if he's going to build one this game. He didn't make one at all last game, did he? Thinking about it. Uh, I don't recall seeing one. Ooh, no. That's quite interesting, because some Protoss players still opt not to get it, because it does delay certain things, but... Still um, Wings of Liberty. That super greedy third as well. It's usually good to get the Mothership Core, but this game looks a bit more normal at the moment. Wow, okay, well, I've just been... I've either been bombed by someone who's really, really good with his maths, or just copy and pasted a page from Liquipedia. Liquipedia? Well, that'd be amazing. Wikipedia, rather. Um, so, six is a perfect number, but it's not the perfect number. It's a perfect number. So, I'm sure the chat will probably give us the rest of the minimum. I don't actually know if any other ones... What the other ones would be. I think we should start a new talk show, Jorosar. Like, um... <laughs> <laughs> Casters talk math or something like that. We we take these important discussions and bring it up. Like viewer no. counts skyrocketing as we're going over this. Like who cares? This stalker is about to kill a zergling. I could talk about statistical um, digital marketing anomalies at you all day long. Um, although that might be a problem for confidentiality confidentiality issues. Rather, I could also talk to you about the stresses required to rip a turbine blade out of the inside of a plane's engine, because conveniently that's more or less what I studied for four years straight. But what I can't talk to you about is how to Fourier transform your cat. So that's definitely something that the mathematician geeks in the chat are more inclined to do, as we have a couple more buildings being snuck here on the inside of the base. They were seen by the Overlord as well, so we're going up to a bit of pressure alongside the Twilight Council coming down in addition to these gateways. Yeah, five gates are going to be coming down, unfortunately. 
Not six gates, though, because that would be the perfect number jump. <laughs> <laughs> that would indeed. The perfect number of gateways is four off of one base if Lillian was here. And we've got a forward pylon going down now right next to a couple of Zerglings, actually, on the left-hand side of the map. That's going to get spotted quickly, but... The Stalkers are going to come here. Very, very nice. The Zergling's trying to pick apart the probe, but the Stalker's doing a great job of defending. Yeah, that pylon staying up essential to this push working. The Dark Shrine coming down behind this draw sun. No blink. It is just going to be a DT rush. Is Orc prepared for this? Well, it's Lair. Is getting down as long as he gets an Overseer, he should be okay. Yep, the Dark, pil uh, dark Pylons. Wow, the dark no, Pylon. That would be friggin' Imba, I'm not gonna lie. My buildings are invisible, guys. Uh, there's no Mothership in this game yet, don't worry. It's not quite that Wings of Liberty, as we have got now more and more units streaming towards the third base. So it looks like A-Bomb, he wants to take out this base ASAP. A couple of Lings out in the back trying to pick apart the Pylon, but A-Bomb too smart for that. And uh, this pressure lives for now. Oh, that was BM by this Overlord, generating that creep just as the probe came in to start chucking down the pylons and things like that. Now, I do actually have a news flash as well. Johnny Rico is the first finalist. He went 2-0. Right. Okay, congratulations to him. And uh, considering he was also the winner of the last qualifier, maybe not too surprising there, but of course still having to go through a raft of UK players to do it. And he is gonna, now going to be meeting either A-Bomb oh, or no. Orc. Oh no, DTs. Oh. DT's draws are there's an overseer morphing, but he hasn't noticed the other one coming up towards the natural, and there is no overseer there. Oh, oh no. and inside the third base? Wow. Well, that's uh, pretty much a way to sort of keep your drones from going down there, really trying to surround them with his own units, successfully doing that. But this second DT is about to start taking some names at the natural. And, well, he should start doing it soon. He's actually starting with a swipe on the queen. He hasn't killed a single worker yet. There we go. And only one worker dying. A little bit of miscontrol there from A-Bomb. We now have some more pressure coming in at the third base location. There's the Mothership Core we were talking about. Let's see how much this can do. Yeah, this is, well, looking pretty pretty damn scary for Orc in the moment because he is having to sit there and be like, well, um, this push is coming. But to the same extent, A-Bomb, those DTs did not do enough. He's only killed six workers this game. He needed considerably more to justify that and the delay in his third and obviously other tech. Yeah, this is uh, not looking that great for A-Bomb, I have to admit, in terms of pressure. Or currently a 116 supply versus 83, and he's got double the army supply as well. So he's feeling pretty comfortable. Is he launching for a massive counterattack off the back of this? Nope, no. because he's just going to go for the Spire, and he's taking his fourth and fifth bases. I really like this move from Orc. Yeah, Orc, he's just macroing up. He's putting on a little bit of pressure because, let's face it, A-Bomb has nothing really to defend with. This is the first Immortal out. His kind of normal tech massively delayed because of that Dark Shrine. Blink only just coming down and these roaches actually doing a nice amount of damage but ignoring the Immortal. Yeah, and that's uh, that's probably a good way to go at the moment because the prize really are these sentries over here by the third base location. Two out of three of them going down now. Is he going to be able to pick apart the third one? Very close. Nice force field there. I feel like this is some sort of StarCraft mini game. The sentry just about surviving. And uh, we'll be losing those roaches, but as long as Orc can keep A-Bomb in his base now, he's going to be two bases up. Yeah, well, remember, the big thing as well is that that was a lot of gas. 825 gas has been lost by A-Bomb so far this game. Not to mention the fact that Orc is still just comfortably sitting here being like, well, I'm going to go back into Mutalisks. That's a viable strategy at the moment because he knows that the Stalker count is going to be really damn low after that little push. Yeah, this... um. Uh, so far, I have to say, Orc's play in this game has just been very, very nice. I, I love his decision to go for that double expansion. It's really going to start paying off a lot. The Mute is now coming in, picking off a healthy number of workers inside the main base. The army is nowhere to be found. And uh, oh, A-Bomb really struggling here in this game number two. Yeah, he's sitting somewhere where actually he doesn't want to be. He's not ahead in terms of the economy. It's 65 to 68 drones, but remember... It's a five base Zerg up against a three base Protoss, and that third base only just now come up. The Muters as well, there isn't an answer to that quite yet. Yes, Blink is now finished, but with only seven Stalkers, nowhere near enough to really hold that off. And A-Bomb was supply blocked very heavily um, by that forward pylon or two going down. He's still at 115 out of 110, and a second pylon is so, so close to complete here. Now this game, he's going to be going for the double Oh, look at the game. third base! Oh, dear, oh, dear, Maddles. Some nice hold position, Micro, by those links there. Not quite able to get the damage he wanted done. Is this going to be enough? A-Bomb with the double Stargate now. So he's doing this game what he didn't do last game, but is it too little too late? 
It's going to be difficult to get out enough Phoenix in time, though. 21 Mutalisks already down. About to be eight more. That's basically 30. You need a lot of Phoenix to deal with that. You really hey, need we have maths oh. geeks in the chat, man. Don't you try passing off 29 as 30. That don't fly here. What if you round up? It is. No, no, Just we say. don't. No. Just saying, unless, you round, unless you're rounding to the nearest 100, then, of course, it's zero Mutalisks, effectively. 29 is its own distinct integer. Thank you very much. What about the what about the low health? Oh, okay, there aren't actually any low health. Mutas, so <laughs> this is harder exactly to swarm. There's no such thing as low health mutas. They're going to be flying into the third base now. Great blink underneath them. It has to be said, and uh, a bomb doing well to defend against that. Now, of course, some of these mutas have taken a few shots, so it's about 29. Point two mutalisks on the field rather than the 32 <laughs> that it appears to be. And yeah, Zerglings have made it up into the main base. They're going to start trying to pick away this cannon, but I like the way that Abon puts a decent number of cannons around just to make sure that any of these runbys don't do too much. Yeah, this is almost like... Uh, to be honest, this is almost like <laughs> 29 with one significant digit would be 30. I love the way that we just managed to turn an entire Twitch chat to discussing nothing but maths. It is I don't awesome. get it. Commentators at other tournaments are like, guys, whatever you do, don't read the Twitch chat. This place is poisonous. And we're like, what are you talking about? We're, we're discussing uh, we're, we're discussing mathematical theory in our Twitch chat right now. Don't worry about it. All the intelligent guys are over here. Fleet Beacon goes down as well as this massive flock of muters now tries to do very, very big damage in the main. Picking apart every single cannon. And I actually think he could have taken on the Stalkers as well, but he's choosing not to right now. Yeah, he hasn't got plus one flyer attack quite yet. These Zerglings are ready to go in towards the third base, though. And not touching on that Twitch chat comment, it's fine while we're here in the safety of our lovely ESET UK Masters community. But then next month, when we're doing, of course, WCS EU Challenger, we're going to still look at the Twitch chat and just see floods of spam and abuse. Yep, I think so. Someone just said math instead of maths in the chat, by the way. I am. Uh, I live in Britain at the moment, so I'm going with the whole mathematics is plural. And it looks like A-Bomb is going to agree with that with a massive amount of links streaming into the third. That's going to signal the end of game number two, which means, Metals, it's all tied up.